All right, folks, welcome to VMworld 2015 Solid Fire. This is the VMware Solid Fire solution, and thanks for attending. What we're going to go through today is a full walkthrough of what the Solid Fire VMware solution is. Uh, for those that don't know Solid Fire, we're, an, we're a scale out all flash storage solution. Uh, we're a block based target. If you haven't seen on the other side of our, our whiteboard here, we've got a uh, four node cluster with uh, the two fiber channel nodes. And what these, these nodes are, if you see here, they're just little 1U nodes. And in the 1Us, we've got 10 SSD drive bays. So these are basic Intel servers with two processors, memory, network, all the things you expect and get from a server. What we do is we put an operating code on there called Element OS, and we cluster those together. So these are our nodes. This is our Element OS. And in the VMware realm, our story is really all about today versus tomorrow. So today you've got VMware environments that are vSphere based in a lot of different versions. You could be at vSphere 5.5, you could be vSphere 6. You could be wanting to become more cloud-like and really start to get a lot of the benefits of the software-defined data center. So as you think about taking today's implementation of your data center and you look towards the software-defined data center and all the things that were mentioned today in the keynote about any, any cloud, any device, and start to execute towards that for agility, for application development, for DevOps, and for the consumption of IT. What we're going to do today is talk a lot about the way that SolidFire brings together a base storage platform. And in these nodes, as we run Element OS across all four nodes in a clustered fashion, what we end up delivering at a base level that's important to know are five key attributes. Now, these five attributes are based off of what every other volume that a consumer of storage in our system would get. So whether it's VMware, whether it's Microsoft, OpenStack, any kind of uh, database on bare metal, they can all consume these benefits. So from a VMware perspective, you start to see the same thing come through in the result of a scale-out architecture. So what does scale-out mean, and what does it mean for a VM? Instead of having controller-based architectures that are based off of two controllers, where you have controller one, controller two, and you've got disk shells, yep. And these disk shells do nothing but add capacity. And, and the problem with a, with a scale-up architecture versus a scale-out architecture is the scale-up architecture le leaves you stranded into silos of storage just for your VMs. And what a consumer really wants is an elastic model where I can take a very small unit, a 1U node here, that will deliver me 50,000 IOPS and varying levels of capacity depending upon the size of node you have. We have four, st four uh, size of nodes and allows you to be able to create clusters so you can expand and add a, add a fifth node, a sixth node, a seventh node, and scale from four nodes all the way up through 100 nodes. So in relative terms, that means that we can scale you up through 7.5 million IOPS and 3.4 petabytes of capacity, all with guaranteed controls on workloads, which is our second element. Uh, in, in a VMware realm, each VM gets their guaranteed performance. So as you create your VMs and their data sets, we can create a min, max, and a burst on those workloads, and that is separate from capacity. So for the first time, we're offering you true software-defined storage, not software just to abstract hardware, but software to abstract the performance of the hardware from the capacity of the hardware. No one else does that. No one else does that at the scale of the clusters that we do. That's a key aspect because when you're truly trying to software define your storage, you want to have those separate controls because there's times when you want to crank up the performance or crank up the capacity. And with today's model of storage, the problem you have is that you're stuck with silos or tiers that you have to calculate. How much of this tier, how much of this tier do I have? And ultimately leaves people with a very inflexible and not a very agile position for scaling VMs. We also have an automatic framework. In the automated management, we have a full API uh, interface that allows all of our feature sets to be exposed through APIs. This allows you to not only be able to consume um, all the instruction sets through things like PowerShell and other API-driven frameworks, but 
it is full transparency down to the Element OS from upper stacks of VMware storage automation that you're trying to do in the software defined data center model that we'll get into in just a minute. We also have data assurance. What this means is that as your VMs have data on our nodes, we have ways to be able to survive a drive loss or a complete node failure. In the absence of a, of a node or a drive, we automatically reestablish the data parity uh, from one set to another. We always keep two copies of the data in the back end of the storage. So we can, pr we can survive a flash uh, drive going out. Our drive time rebuilds are, are in the matter of minutes versus you know, RAID typically taking hours. We can survive a node failure well within an hour to be able to rebuild the data uh, from that one node across these other three nodes, or if you have six nodes or eight nodes or however many, we can survive hardware failures. So all the VMs and their data have full assurance that you're going to have uptime and you're not going to have down outages that related to hardware failures. The last is global efficiency. This is huge because in the software defined data center, you want VMs to be able to live on as dense a compacted uh, format as possible. So what this means is that as you take a workload like VDI that is highly dedupable, we start to see incredible efficiencies and, and, and effectiveness. So when we take VDI and we put it on a node, we see somewhere in the range of 700 desktops on each node. Now considering that we have to have some data assurance paired in here, that means that we get over 3,000 virtual desktops on a, four, on a 4U node configuration. And we didn't just pack those in densely. Each of the users get their QoS guaranteed assurance of their user experience, that performance that you want as part of your software controls. So as we do this, we haven't even talked at all about vSphere integration. We haven't even talked about automation. So we're just talking about the base storage platform, what it does even without that. So that's Element OS and that's the nodes. The next iteration of the story as you build your journey from today to tomorrow is the vSphere integrations. In here we have several parts of the story. Our first one is with SIOC. For those that don't know what SIOC is, it's the storage controls built into vSphere that allow you to be able to set performance parameters so that if latency kicks to a certain level, it'll automatically take control of certain I.O. and, re and basically throttle it down. The problem with storage I.O. controls is that they don't have a way to be able to uh, fully guarantee the minimum. All they can do is rate limit the maximum. So what we do in SIOC is we have a full API integration with our QoS that you see down in, in the base element OS. So here we've got a, a connection right down into what we have in the base element OS. That allows us to be able to have a full complement of the min, max, and burst up into SIOC. And then as you would vMotion workloads around, we persist the data motioning that you'd have in a, in a software-defined data center. Another integration that we have is VAI. So these are the array integration offloads. So as you're doing uh, copies and offloads, uh, this is something where the array will take the brunt of those tasks versus the CPU and your hosts taking those tasks. We also have a VASA provider. Our VASA provider is the control plane engine for VMware and vSphere. This provides a talking mechanism between all the sublayers of controls of storage and the VMs. So it's VM talking to storage and be able to coordinate that across elements. And our VASA provider helps us do things with policy-based management. It helps us to construct the future of VVOLs, et cetera. We also have an SRM integration. SRM is the site-to-site -site uh, failover and recovery. In this case, we have, the, we have the, the storage replication adapter. So that means that we can have a four-node cluster replicating to another four-node cluster somewhere else in your geo or with a, a cloud provider. And that gives you the full capability of having an automated runbook to fully either recover from, test, or move full VMs from one software-defined data center to another. We have that integration. We're one of the first to the market in the all-flash realm to do that, and that's a key reason why you can have faith in us in our integrations. And then the last for us is the future called VVOLs. This is vSphere Virtual Volumes. We've been earliest in the program. We were one of the first early uh, five to 10 storage providers in the program for VVOLs, and we've been there for over three years. We're now coming to market very soon 
with Avivol's implementation. In fact, we're talking to select clients about our beta program today while we're here. And if you're interested in Vivals and you've got a solid fire array, talk to us, or if you're looking at that, talk to us and let us know what your interest is. We're taking some highly qualified people through the first rounds of beta, but Vivals here is gonna deliver for us the future consumption of storage. This is where we get away from lawn management <coughs> and we start getting VMs talking directly to their data sets for high scale and high automation. This is ironically not as much of a storage implementation as it is an automation and consumption story about how IT and the whole IT infrastructure stack consumes storage, not just once, but at scale. Okay, so look for our message here. This is the portfolio of our vSphere integration points. Now, that's great, but I think the next path in the software-defined data center and the software-defined storage journey gets up into automation. In automation, we start our story with our vCenter plugin. Our vCenter plugin gives you that capability to be able to not go into the Element OS UI to be able to execute storage commands for creation, provisioning, and all the uh, administrative tasks that you would see in a vSphere implementation. So our first point of automation is our vCenter plugin. If you want more information on that, we've got some demos here. We can walk you through all that. The next thing you'll see from us is our upcoming release of PowerShell. You'll see full automation of not just one classification of tasks, but multiple classifications of tasks. And uh, Josh Atwell, one of our cloud architects, is delivering this PowerShell module along with our uh, developer organization. If you're looking for, for more information on our PowerShell integration, uh, see us in the booth here. Come see some, uh, de we may have a demo or two to, to look at that as well. Our next integration is something called SPBM. Does anybody know what SPBM is? This is storage policies. This is storage-based policy management, right? This is ultimately where VMware wants you to go next. If you're, man if you're manually doing storage and you don't have policies created for these storage elements, get to storage policy-based management. This is an automation component, an integration part of vSphere that, that works with the VASA provider to connect down to our Element OS and it functions such that you'll be able to have full exposure of capabilities to be able to say, I want to be able to expose capabilities here up through my VASA provider, up to SPBM, so I can make those consumable by people that want to build VMware implementations or if you combine that in with Realize automation, we've got a tech preview here where we show the full consumption. So now we're, all, we're dealing with the consumption of storage at a, at a base storage level with our Element OS that you can log into and manage. You, you get into the vSphere integrations to the vCenter plugin, PowerShell, using SPBM to go down through our VASA provider to leverage all this goodness, and you bring it up through vRealize automation to fully automate the consumption of IT, not just for storage guys, not just for admin people on the vSphere side, but also for application builders. So if someone wants to build 100 MongoDB instances or they want to build some web apps, you can do that all through a vRealize integration that will have, like I said, we've got a tech preview of it here, and we'll show you how that looks and feels and what the future is going to be like. Whether you're consuming things with vVols or without vVols, the future is bright here. Now, the last part of this journey gets into the use cases. How do I use all this in a VMware environment? That's where we start getting up into the workloads. We have both infrastructure delivery, we have uh, applications that live in not just one silo or one implementation, but we also have a great way to understand how this works from an application deployment perspective. So when we talk about infrastructure delivery, this entire stack of the software-defined data center and software-defined storage is consumable to application builders, also made in an infrastructure as a service deliverable for other service providers or enterprises that are trying to do that. But also, VDI doesn't have to be its own separate workload. Traditionally, you've seen VDI go in as a separate standalone piece of hardware, right? I need separate storage for VDI. 
Well, the last thing I'll tell you about our story on the, on the VMware side is you see commonly someone will put us in for a MySQL, a SQL, a MongoDB, web app, some kind of database or workload that is not desktop based. A system like this will run with efficiencies such that you can start to target some virtual desktop users and ultimately add VDI for free because the storage efficiencies that we have in our base system allows for you to be able to pack a ton of users on a very small amount of footprint. And it is the, it is the coexistence of all these workloads that can be separated so that you have performance controls around every single one of these. So as I try to build SLAs, I can execute that with software controls as was originally envisioned by Stephen Herod for the Software Defined Data Center. Thank you for coming. This is our VMware solution. We'd love to help you get there from today's implementation to tomorrow. Any questions? All right, thanks for coming, everybody.